let's say we wanted to look at the stability of a system where we know the transfer function. The transfer function is h of s. And just for the sake of argument, let's say that's some expression uh, that's numerator and denominator. So let's just say we have some alpha divided by s minus a. Uh, forget it. Let's do that. S minus, let's just convert this to, to capital A. S minus alpha times S minus beta. Now, there are no zeros, right, uh, in, this, in this transfer function because it's just in terms of, you know, there's no S up here. And there are two poles, right? And they're A and B, alpha and beta, which are the poles. We could rewrite this equation as something else. And we'll just you know, say it's A1 over S minus alpha plus A2 S minus beta. Here, all we've done is we've broken up, right? We've factored out the S and the A uh, so that we have, you know, it's S plus. And so we've done all the math and whatever's up here on top is that. Uh, are those terms that would help break this apart. It's doable, I'm just not gonna walk through the, the algebra for it. Just rewriting this equation, or this expression. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert this back into the trans, into the time domain so that we can make some intuitive statements about what it means to be stable with these poles and zeros. Oh, sorry, with these poles. And what for what values the poles of alpha and beta is the system stable and that how does that shift and determine what the poles are. So the Laplace rule we're going to be using here is that E of A to the T in the Laplace in this time domain is if you take the Laplace transform of that, then it's equal to one over S minus A. Does that look familiar to either of these? It's exactly the same thing. So this is really pretty. So if we were to transfer this now into the time domain, let's do that. We now have, we're gonna get H of T is equal to, and A1 is just a constant, so we can pull it out, A1, and that leaves us with one over S minus alpha, and that's S minus A here, so that means E to the alpha T, e to the alpha T plus A2 E to the beta T. This, these two terms and these two terms are the equivalent, right? We've just transformed from the inverse transform, right? We've taken, we've taken, we've taken this expression and performed L inverse of it to get us back into the time domain. Now looking at this, if this is the time domain expression of the transfer function, what can we say? Well, we can say that we can make very concrete statements now about what it means for this transfer function to be stable, for the system to be stable. When we, want, when we say a system is stable, that means that for a given impulse function or for any given input, it doesn't explode. It doesn't go to negative infinity or infinity. Well, where are the time varying terms here? They're up here, and what, what do we have? A1 and A2 are just constants. So even if they're you know, complex or whatever they happen to be, they're not gonna cause instability, but they're usually real. The issue is A and B, or alpha and beta. If alpha or beta are greater than zero, if they're real parts of alpha and beta, remember, these are complex frequencies, so they could be negative, or it could be imaginary, but if the real component of alpha and beta, so if the real component of alpha or beta is greater than zero, guess what? What's gonna happen as time goes forward? This is gonna explode. One of these is gonna go to infinity. Then H of T tends to infinity or negative infinity, but in this case, infinity, that puts us into an unstable system. That is not good. That means that given any input, you're gonna end up exploding. And so then to maintain stability, to 
have a stable system. So for stability, alpha and beta, the real parts of them, must be less than zero. And if that sounds familiar, right, if that is reminiscent of fixed point stability and Poincare diagrams, where you're looking at the left side of the trace, or the trace being on the eigenvalues being on the right or the left, whether the trace is positive or the trace is negative, you are correct because the ideas are all related. In fact, these are the eigenvalues. I'm gonna show you that in just a moment in the next video. But you can see, right, that if these were negative, if alpha and beta, the real parts were negative, then this, for whatever inputs you give, are just going to decay to zero. And thus, if alpha and beta have real parts that are negative, then this entire system is stable. So for LTI system stability, the poles of the, of the transfer function, right, the poles, the real parts of the poles must all be less than zero. That is true. That's how you can define bounded input, bounded output stability of a linear time invariant system.